Hello. Today's been a little bit stressful. And so this evening I just wanted to do some swatching out of watercolours. You could call it colour therapy. I've got an unopened pack of Bayer Hong Academy watercolour paper in cold press. And also this palette, which I hastily filled before I came out to France with some tube paint, which hadn't ever made it into any of my other palettes. So I thought this evening I'd just swatch them out in an enjoyable way. Up until now, I've just had this very hastily put together colour chart with the paint information on it. I'm not sure if you can make out the texture on it or not, but it does have a fair bit. I'm not going to swatch out these first five opera colours from a Paul Rubens set which I recently showed. I didn't video this first one for some reason. I decided I'm going to swatch each colour out in a leaf shape. And I'm using a Princeton Aqua Elite round number eight brush. I'm using a Lamy Safari fountain pen for all of the paint names. I was very tempted to leave this as a real-time video because it is just meant purely as a relaxing colour swatching video. But the internet speed here in France is so slow, where I live at least, that a 20 minute video already takes about 12 hours to upload. And this is about twice as long as that. So I will have to speed it up a little bit. I'd also like to point out that this was never intended as a comprehensive colour palette. It really is just random colours that as I was looking through my paint tubes, I realised I just hadn't used in palettes and I quite fancied taking to France. So when I put the colours that I'd selected into a slightly more standard kind of order, I think they actually make a really, really lovely palette. and. I think you could probably achieve most colours if you were to use it as a mixing palette. I've loved seeing all these colours side by side and it was just what I needed this evening. Another thing to add is that thanks to YouTube and other people's swatches, I've chosen each of these individual paints with care and I have to say that every single one of them was a joy to use. I would hand on heart recommend any of them. There are quite a few Schminky Haradan super granulating paints coming up and once dried those are a little bit harder to re-wet than the others in my experience. But they are such incredibly beautiful paints when they dry that that's hardly a factor at all. This Daniel Smith Duochrome Hibiscus is also a bit of an oddity. It too is quite hard to re-wet. It has some shimmer in it, which I'll try and show you once it's dry. I used the wrong colour for the first swatch in this row, so I come back and fill it in later when the paper's dry again. There's quite a large proportion of greens in this palette, I think because I've been focusing on landscapes for a lot of this year, and that seems to be a lot of the paints that I've bought.
lights fading inside, so I've just brought them outside to show you them now that they're all dry. And there's the actual colour, which just looks a white mess. <laughs> Over here at the well. And then just quickly, I'll show you how I'm making my colour sheet to go in the palette. I'm just cutting a chunk out of each leaf where you get a good mixture of the gradient and sticking it on. I made a couple of mistakes, so I had to stick white cardboard over the top. So when I've completed all of that, I'll cover it in sticky back plastic and keep that with the palette. And here's the completed colour chart before I put the sticky back plastic on it. I've added the Paul Rubens opera colours as well now. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.